Well, folks, I'm just going to go lively before this video starts, and it's just to say thanks to everybody for tuning in over this past few weeks from before Halloween to hear the different stories of the, the demons and gods and monsters of the of the mountains in the area here in Mid Ulster, and then to listen into the story of Cahollan. I've had messages come in from Russia, America, some from France, and of course a lot of people back home here. So thank you very thank you very much and to those who pledged some support on the crowdfunding project. Again, thank you. There's still some time if you wanna if you wanna pledge. But um, after this, I'm still gonna do more stories, whether or not the the funding goes on or not. But I'm not waste your time here and I'm just gonna set up the video now. So if you can bear with me for a few minutes, I will get the video going. Folks, and we're now at the, the final night of the of the story of Cahola. And it's been a, a long story, and I know it's a long story, but uh, as I said several times before, if you are interested in the story, pop online and all those old ancient texts have been translated and you can read them all for yourself. Tonight though we're gonna talk about a couple of stories about Cahola and then talk about his eventual death. Now one of the stories of Cahola that always amuses me is the one of the day he got married. Now back then, it was custom for King Connor to take the new brides to bed at night, prima nocta. It's been happening for years. But even Connor himself, he was a wee bit worried about taking Nima for her first night. <laughs> and understandably so, because Cahollan had just trained across the oceans, killed unbeatable foes already. Like Connor was going to take his wife. But they had to think of something. They had to find a way that Connor could keep his honour and Cahan could keep the most of his. At the end of the day, Connor was a red branch knight and a fearless warrior. So Cahan and Connor both went to the Druid Cath bed. The one he had proposed that Cahan would be famous but die young. And Caspar had a, a very ingenious plot. Connor would take him out of bed that night, but Caspar would lie in between them, just to make sure nothing would happen. This seemed to keep Cahon happy enough, and this was keeping the illusion that Connor had upheld his tradition. And the next morning, Cahon went to the bedchamber, turfed Connor out, and Caspar. Instead of spending the first night with his wife, they spent their first morning together. But when you think of this, think of what Cahollan sacrificed for the name of Ulster. Ultimately, it would be a honour about Cahollan that would kill him. The Champions portion is also another great story where Cahollan and two other Red Branch Knights, they were pitted against each other by Bickery. He's a Bit of a trickster and a bit of a known trickster at that too, but at the end of the day, uh, a chieftain in Ireland and was also said to be pretty handy with a sword in his younger days. But he thought he'd stir up a wee bit of grief within the Ulster men, so he invited Cahollan, Connell, and Legler to the to a feast. Now it was custom at the feast that the the best part of the the meat would be given to the best champion. And here's where he met a few problems. 
They're creating probably most of the champions portion to all three of them. But all three of them were never going to get it. And he poisoned their ears and even the ears of their wife. And they began to challenge each other. But at this then, King Connor, he seen what was going on. He decided there'd be a series of tests to find out who the best champion was. Now the first tests weren't really that much. But every time Cajon came out on top. But it was Kuroi, a drew from Nester. He did test. And this would be the final test. Each of the men were going to be challenged to keep watch for the night. First up was Leipa. While he was standing watch over Ulster, he was approached by a giant. Now this giant was carrying a huge axe. But the giant came up quite friendly and said to the champion that he had let Legler cut off his head if in return he had allowed the giant to come back the next night and do the same to him. A wee bit amused at this, he, uh, he accepted the challenge. The giant put his head down in the block. His head was cut off. But he got back up, picked up his head, walked off into the night. The next night when the giant returned, there was no one there. And he would be able. Next up was Colin, a fantastic warrior, and with a name nearly as good as Colin. But no one knew that the, the giant was coming. He set up waiting for him. He's going to take his head and then some. So the giant came, made the offer to Colin. Giant put his head down in the block. Connell cut it off, but for good measure, chopped and hacked at it for a good while. But the giant got up, picked up what was left of his head, walked off into the night. Now, the next night, the giant returned. There's no one there. But who was going to accept that challenge? Connell. He would keep his word. As I said before, his word will lead to his death. So the next night, Cahun set up. The giant appeared. And he made the offer to Cahun. Cahun accepted. And with no vengeance or no cruelty or malice, he cut the giant's head off. And as before, the giant picked up his head, walked off in the night. The next night came, and a lot of people tried to stop Cahun from going. Stop him from... Keeping his vow, that was never going to happen. So the great giant appeared again. Cajon put his head out in the block, stretched his neck out, and waited for the blow. The giant seemed to take his time. He sort of anchored Cajon when he told the giant to get on with it. So the giant swung his axe. <clears throat> the axe hit the ground. The giant left and standing there was Kuroi, the druid. And after this, he proclaimed Cahun the best warrior in Ulster and that he should always get the champion's portion. And that anyone he said otherwise would be killed by Kuroi. I'm thinking of this later on. It was Cahun who killed Kuroi. Now, the full version of this has the women fighting each other, fighting over the men, fighting over their position in the kingdom. He had the men beating their chests. Who was the best? Who was the strongest? But at the end of the day, it was an honour bound Cajon. And Cajon always prevailed. But there was one event before Cajon's death that really struck him. He's bound to know that after killing Ferdy at the ford in the Battle of Cullium, breaking that bond, that the end was near. But there's one more sorrow in his life. And if you remember back to earlier stories, Cahon went to Sicily to train. And there he met a princess, Aoife, the warrior princess. And she bore him a child. And done what Cahon said. And she done what Cahon said. If that child was a son, that she would train him and train him well. And send him to Ireland so that Cahon could finish his training. And she did. She trained him well. But she's still a wee bit zealous over Cahon. She thought after the, the two years that he spent there that he would stay his life there. But as we all know, Cajon loved Emer. And he was always going to marry Emer. So before Cajon's son left, she told him he was never to give way to any man. He was never to back down from a fight. But she knew this would be the death of him. 
or what remains of Cahollan in her life. A vicious woman indeed, almost reminds you of Queen Maeve. But uh, in those days, the women were well revered as warriors, as, as high-born people, leaders. So the young boy landed in Ireland, and he landed on the beach, close to some Ulster warriors, King Connor. So King Connor sent Connell to ask who this boy was, to get his name, and to come back and tell the king. A stranger must always introduce himself first, or it is taken as great offence. The young boy refused. Now Connell, a fierce warrior, tried to convince the young boy. Tried to convince him if they fought, he'd die. But the young boy stood strong. And the fight began. And Connell, for all his strength, for all his bravery, for all his feats, for all his deeds, couldn't beat this young boy. Couldn't beat Cahill and son. And fear of death, Connell finally gave way. And made his way back over to King Connor. Slightly ashamed. So as usual, when something like this happens, Cahill was called for. And Cahill arrived. And not only stood face to face with his son. And in his own mind, was happy to kill this young boy in the beach if he wouldn't give his name. See, so enough, and he beseeched the young boy to give his name. Or he'd kill him. But the young boy was true to his mother's word, and he wouldn't give it. So they fought. And they fought. And they ravaged at each other. And Gohan knew that there was a great fight in this young man. He was well trained. Trained almost as well as he was. But as they fought more and more, Gohan's rage flung up. He did this full battle flight, almost like a light shining from his head and his whole body bursting to get at him. And at this point, the young man knew that this was Cajon. He knew that this was his father. So he feigned a swipe at him. But Cajon, in full battle rage, used the gale bog for the second time. Kicked it hard. Pierced the young boy's belly, filling the young boy full of barbs. And lying down in the beach, the young boy stuck up his thumb, trying to get his father's attention. And at this, Cajon seen his ring, the ring that he left Aoife to give the child, and he knew that he'd just killed his son. <laughs> now lying, dying in the sand, Colin. Now lying, dying in the sand with the, the gale bug in him, and it wasn't coming out. Go home and over and comforted his son. And asked him his name. Connell, I should have named him. And after this, one by one, all the great knights of the Red Branch, all the great heroes of Ulster, even King Connor came one by one, knelt at Connell's side, and introduced themselves as a mark of respect to Cahillan's son. And before Connell took his last breath, him and Cahillan spoke a little. They spoke about how together they would have been unstoppable. How, together with the Ulster men, they could reach the gates of Rome in the Second Empire. Now it was said after this that Cajon's grief was so bad that he stayed on that beach. He fought the waves for three days until he tired out. He finally went back to the comfort of humour. Now back home, Cajon was thinking, is this the glory that Cathbert talked about in his prophecy? It didn't feel like it. And from that time and onwards, Cajon met many different warriors many different armies and beat all of them. He was the unstoppable hound of Ulster. But even he knew this had to end sometime. And that end was near. There was a new king in Tara who Cahillan actually blessed. This king conspired with Munster at Leinster, the host of Ireland, to finally to go up and kill the hound and to take over Ulster. This man was Lugard, son of Kuroi. And he would have his kingdom, and he would have his revenge. Or so he thought. Now he fearing the worst for Cajon, or by pure instinct, King Connor convinced Cajon to leave him in Mahan and take some refuge for a while. So he sent him to the Valley of the Dead. This is most likely somewhere up in the Sperm Mountains. No army was going to get through there and to get that, you'd have to get through all of Buster's defences. 
Connor thought he was safe there. Now, Luger just didn't conspire with Ulster and Monster leaders. He conspired with Druids. One was called Catelyn. And she had three daughters and three sons. And she prophesied the three spears threw by Cahon would kill three kings. The only thing was, how was Luger ever going to get Cahon's spears? And how could he be left standing after calling through them? So the, the host of Ireland assembled again and they mustered up towards Ulster. And So the host of Ireland, hmm. so the host of Ireland mustered again, just like in the cattle ridicule, and they made their way for Ulster. But they also sent the three daughters of Cattle deep into the mountains to search for Cajon, and they were like three enchantresses. And when they found the house where Cajon was at, they tortured him, tormented him, chanted outside, feigned sounds that were like battle, all to draw Cajon out. But finally they broke Cajon's mind and they convinced him that King Connor was in danger and that Cajon must ride for Tara to save him. But this was just a trap to draw Cajon into the host of Ireland. Cajon got in his chariot and on his chariot here leg and they set off. Now as Cajon made his way down to meet this army he was stopped in the road by a woman, probably one of the three sisters, and she bid Cajon to stay with her and eat. And Cajon had to. That was one of his vows. He could not turn down the hospitality when it was offered to him. And when he got close, he seen that she was cooking a dog. And this sort of made him feel a wee bit sick. He'd vowed not to eat dog after killing Cajon's hound. But Cajon was honour bound to eat the tribute and eat the dog. Now some say this weakened Cajon, if you go with the mythology. That his hand was weakened and that his leg was weakened. It's more than likely that he's just poisoned. But being a, a strong man, the poison just slowed him down a wee bit. And also, as we're on the mythology here, the spears, there's talk of silver spears, magical spears that were thrown at Cajon, but at the end of the day, they were normal spears. No magic, no myth, just real spears. And Lugrid and the three sons of Catelyn, they still sort of scratched their head. They still need to get these spears if they're going to kill the hound. So the three sons of Catelyn agreed to be sacrificed. Cajon finally met the host of Ireland and they were in full defence formation. Not easily attacked. Couldn't attack them from any angle. But at this one of the sons of Catelyn stepped out, being in the fight. And he taunted Cajon to spear him. Like Cajon not want the ways to spear and someone who obviously was no threat to him. He was going to pass him by. But the first son of Catelyn threatened to crush Cajon to make a satire and joke out of him. So Cajon speared him. And Lugard stepped out and took the spear and fired it back at Cajon. But he missed Cajon and killed the egg. And the first death of a king had occurred. The king of the charioteers. The second son of Ketlin stepped out and done the same. And Cajon wouldn't be as quick to, to fire a spear at him. But the second son threatened to curse the entire name of Ulster and King Connor. And Cajon couldn't have this, so he speared the second brother. And Lugard again stepped out and returned the spear, this time hitting the grave Maha, the king of horses. And the third son stepped out. And he threatened to curse Cajon if he didn't spear him. And he threatened to curse Cajon's wife and future family generations for all time. Now although Cajon hesitated, he couldn't have this, so he speared him. And Lugard returned the spear and struck Cahal, the third king. And the prophecy was complete. Now this didn't kill Cahal, but it said at this time it ripped through him as intestines fell out of him. Though not killing Cahal outright, but with his intestines hanging out of him, he knew the end was near. And he requested that he be allowed to go to a nearby lock to have some water to quench his thirst. I still fear him. The army let Cajon go. They knew he wouldn't be far away. Let Cajon quench his thirst, bandaged himself back up as best he could, and tied himself to a standing stone, standing up. He was still ready to face the army of Ireland. 
Hey, for quite some time, Lugrid or none of the, the army would approach Cahalan. They wanted to make sure that he was dead. And after some time passed, a bird settled on Cahalan's shoulder. And Lugrid knew the knew the life had left the young hound. And it wasn't in a clash of steel. He stood there on his own two feet, staring down an army that was approaching him. Fearless. And finally Lugrid approached Cahalan. Now, be it that Cahalan's sword fell or, or he had one last swipe left on him, Lugrid's hand was cut off. And in return, Lugrid took Cahalan's head and took his hand. And he made off for Tara. He might be safe there. And he knew the Austin men were coming. Maeve retreated in the Connacht. And the rest of the army began to scatter across Ireland. They didn't want to face the Austin men in this fury. Now it was always going to be too late by the time the Austin men arrived. But Colin arrived first. And he swore not to rest until he had avenged Cahalan. Until he had his vengeance with the person who beheaded him. Now here's an interesting part. This is going by whichever story you want to read. It's one of the first mentions of the Red Hand of Ulster. This is where Colin was supposed to have taken his hand, covered it in Cahalan's blood, and placed it on the white banner. And this was to symbolise the hound, to symbolise that Ulster was coming. It was to let the retreating army of Ireland know there was blood in their hands. Now finally Connell caught up with Lugrid and they had a great battle. But in the end Connell took his head and took his hand. But in the end Connell took his head. And after this he took Cahalan's head and Cahalan's hand and returned him back to Emer. And here ends the story of Cahalan. The greatest warrior that Ireland has ever known. He fought the biggest armies Ireland ever mustered. Protected Ulster. From anyone who came from the seas. Or anyone who came from the south. Now the Ulster cycle does not finish there. There are far more stories. And even though as I said at the start. This started off as a crowdfunding project. It didn't go too well. But it's probably bad planning from my part. But. I'm going to continue to tell some of these stories as I am telling them as it feels good to be telling them again. And from some of the feedback I'm getting, it's telling stories that people never knew existed. They heard of Cahalan, but they didn't know the story. They heard of King Connor, but they didn't know the story. Or the Red Branch Knights. And to think about this as well, there's also the mythological cycle and the Fenian cycle. Again, full of stories and... I think I'll continue telling some of them. But the next one that I am going to tell, I'm going to stick in the Ulster cycle and stick in Connell. Because there's a fantastic story about how he went to Rome, wrestled the Romans, and how, he, and how he eventually ended up at the crucifixion of Jesus. But it's up to you to decide if those stories are true. To me, Cullen was real. The Red Branch Knights were real. Ulster, we know was not just a province as we know it now. It was a kingdom of his own, the powerhouse of Ireland. And to control Ulster, no matter if you're a high king or not, was to control Ireland. I think though that I will do a wee live session very soon in terms of me sitting here and taking some questions from people about the story of Cajon, about some of the stories that I've told already. And give you the chance to feed back in to these stories. Maybe ask some questions that you have in your mind. Now, I might not always have the answer, but uh, there's this thing over the years that served me well. It's called Google. It's brilliant. But in between now and then, I do urge you to use Google. Search up the story of Cajon, the Hound of Ulster. Search up all those ancient texts that have all been translated and read them for yourself. So until the next time, stay safe. And I'll see you soon. <laughs>